Hello, Nathan. We're Hello. Recording. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm glad you're here. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, don't be, I promise I won't be mean. <laughs> well, I know you're not mean. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I am. <laughs> so we you actually... Me up all the time. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> I feel like there's other people that probably have a vastly different opinion of me, but uh, whatever. That is what it is. Um, so you wrote to me a long time ago and told me some interesting stuff. And I was like, oh, you have to come on. You have to come on. And I kind of prodded you to do it. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so now you're nice. here. Yeah. So um Let's talk about whatever you want to talk about. Where do you well, want to start? I have a question for you. Of course. It's something like, that's been like, know. and you're probably thinking, what's he going to ask? No. <laughs> you post a lot of pictures of the moon, but I, I, do. I don't understand why. I, well, first of all, because um, I take a lot of walks. And when I'm, I, I prefer walks at night. And so when I'm out walking and the moon is just so perfect, I try to get a good picture of it. And then sometimes in the morning, I get up very early. I get up at 3.40 every day and I'll go get coffee. And sometimes the moon is just so beautiful. I have to take a picture. I hate the sun. Um, I'm definitely a night person, but, um, it, it also, there's more to it than that. I have a weird draw to it. Um, and it goes back decades. There's something, this weird feeling I get when I look at the moon, it's almost like connecting to some other place. Um, and I don't know if it's, I mean, I don't, I don't really believe in reincarnation. So I don't think it's that. But I think there's something that I'm sort of tapping into maybe from just like a collective history of something. I don't know. But nevertheless, I see the moon. It's beautiful. I get a good vibe off of it. And I like to take pictures of it. I understand. <laughs> Short story long. <laughs> <laughs> an interesting question though I'm like that's a that's an interesting question so what what did you think I might say I really didn't know and then I yeah. thought and we're not I understand your feelings here and I don't how do I want to put this you're not going to offend me so don't worry about being weird or anything I'm no I'm trying to think how to phrase it so it, it sounds right um yeah. You'd mentioned some things that happened to you before years ago, mm -hmm. and I'm not bringing that up, but I thought maybe it was something tied in with that. I mean, potentially, I mean, I, all this stuff is sort of tied together anyways, right? So, I mean, it could very well be. I mean, I like I can remember specific events where I was outside at night and had a strong connection to the moon. Like there was a feeling there and so, Sometimes I think that gets triggered also when I see it because I can remember specific things I was doing and vibe with it at the same time. So that kind of does happen. So there is some connection and it's not a negative connection. It's a positive connection. But um, yeah. Okay. That was just a suspicion, but I thought the pictures are yeah. always nice. I want you to know that, but I thought wonder why she does that so often. You know? Yeah, I just, it's so beautiful to me. But I always feel like sometimes I get some really good ones, but other times I'm like, ah, but it just doesn't do it justice, you know? Yeah. It's hard yeah, with I a cell phone. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that was a I good have question. notes behind you here. <laughs> sure. Because I was sure. afraid I'd forget to tell you something. Yeah. And I thought, you write all this stuff down because you're a moron and it's going to go right out you know no i can't remember anything so you're not a moron it's just i don't know what this is but i can't remember you haven't seen me in action <laughs> well you haven't seen me in action either 
<laughs> my sister told me smoke was pure and I believed her. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> smoke is not pure. <laughs> smoke is, is not like pure air. <laughs> well, yeah, true. But it's pure but it's pure smoke, right? Smoke is pure, pure in smoke. another sense, I guess you're right. <laughs> it's smoke. Smoke is like, but I'm not trying to be air. I'm trying to be smoke. True. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> random tangent. So, so, so let's start at the start. What do you, what do you, you had some strange things happen. Let's, let's talk about it. All right. I love spooky, creepy, weird stories. You want me to start at the, like, years ago? Yeah, let's start at the start. Because, uh, how do I want to put this? Over the past, like, 15 years mm -hmm. is when I've kind of, like, figured out there's something funny going on. Okay, sure. but stuff has happened to me ever since I was little. But I just didn't connect it, you know. And Yeah. Um, I was raised. So go, go about it how, how it makes sense to you. Well, when we were younger, uh, my brother and my sister and I, and I didn't really think about it till I start connecting everything. We saw two different things that now I'm wondering if we saw apparitions or if I said that right or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. uh, one time we were in our front yard raking leaves and my dad was there. I remember that. And uh, we lived like a, almost to the base of a hill. It wasn't steep, but there was a road to separate our house from the actual hilltop. And it was all, that was forest up there, not forest, but woods. I'll say woods. Mm -hmm. Forest is when, you know, it's real deep and you can't get through it. Sure. <laughs> But, um, and we looked up and there was, I don't know if you remember, I think it was a second poltergeist movie, the preacher that had the hat. Mm -hmm. There was a guy standing up in the woods that looked just like that. Ew. And he was staring at us. And, you know, of course us kids got a little bit excited and we're saying, dad, who, who is that? And the guy just kind of turned and went off through the woods and my dad just brushed it off. So we just went about our day raking leaves. Yeah. And I'm thinking back, I wonder if we if we saw a spirit or something, you know. That's pretty weird. But then I don't remember how long after that uh, we were out in the yard again. I don't remember what we were doing at that time. I remember it was a cold day and there was an old woman and she, um, she had on like a gray London fog coat and she was a mess. Her hair was hmm. a mess. The coat was like disheveled. And I lived in uh, Dubois, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Mm, no. Mm -mm. But Interstate 80 runs through Pennsylvania. And my parents had built their house right where Interstate 80 went through. And they had to move it up the road about a quarter of a mile. And at that time, we just assumed that maybe the woman was in an accident or something from Interstate 80 and had climbed up over the hill through the woods and was disoriented. But she went off through the woods and uh, we went after her because she just didn't look right. right. And she disappeared completely. Wow. Never found it. There was nothing, you know, in the in our local newspaper about an accident or anything, but she was a real she wasn't bloody or anything, but she was a real mess. Her coat was crooked on her and her hair was a mess. Huh. <laughs> and were there any other houses nearby? Yes, but they uh there's quite I don't want to say a large distance. You could see the houses, but they were they were spread out. Hmm. That's yeah, this, this is on backcountry road, so you could see the neighbor's houses, but, you know, we weren't, like, right next door. Like, right. You hmm. could run across the road with your, without a coat, you know? You'd have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, that's interesting. 
Well, you know how winters are. You were in Ohio. You know how they got up here. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. So I'd say interesting. That'd be about 1970, 72, somewhere around there. Okay. Those two things went on. And then uh, now, now we'll get to something that's a little bit hard, but um, when, when I was 15, about March, I got an awful feeling hmm. and it lasted with me for a week. And by the end of the week, I thought, I'm not going to make it till spring. Oh my I don't know why, but I had myself convinced that I was in my final time, you know. And oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, that May, uh, my brother committed suicide in in our house. Oh my um, gosh! Oh my gosh! And that that to me, it it's always stayed with me that I feel that I kind of knew it before it happened. Wow. Because Do you think that, maybe you were picking up on his um, like grief and anguish and- I believe so. Like empathetically? I, uh, I'm thinking that now. Um, he was deaf, uh, okay. born deaf, nerve deafness. Uh, popular, boy was he popular. and. I mean, people just gravitated to him and he was just, he was personable. And at that time he went to, uh, in those days, he went, he came down here to Pittsburgh. He'd catch a shuttle bus Sunday, spend the whole week down in Pittsburgh at the deaf school and then ride home Friday night. And uh, the deaf school at that time did, did not want the families to learn sign language hmm. because when the, when the child would go out into the world, not everybody knows sign language and they had to figure out how to talk to people. True. He carried a notepad mm. and uh, he would write notes and stuff, but he was a good guy, never in trouble. In fact, he gave my mom a heart attack when he come home one weekend and showed her his driver's license and she didn't even know he was taking driver's ed, you know? <laughs> yeah. Aww. But uh, he had got a job as a, as a uh, janitor and he was 23 and he was doing really well. He still lived with, you know, with family there and was doing really well. But uh, the guys where he worked were harassing him Ugh. and, you know, just doing stuff on the floor that they shouldn't have been doing. And uh, he saw them steal him one night and they threatened him and different things like that. And I, that it just, Oh, and they called him names and just terrible things because he was deaf, you know, and I don't know how he put it up with it. And uh, I feel bad because we were having a disagreement the week he died, but I think it's all good now, you know, but yeah, at the time, it's sure. bad about it, you know, yeah. but that, that happened when I was about 15. Wow. And then, uh, didn't really pay attention to much things, but the next strange thing I wanted to tell you is, <laughs> do you remember web TV? Oh uh, yeah, that was my introduction to the internet, yeah. Same here. <laughs> yeah, loved it. <laughs> well, out of the blue, I don't even know how I got, they had Tuck City chat rooms, <laughs> yes. remember that? I do. You had to drive down that road when you were logging in, remember? Yeah. Yeah. I used to build up, they called them signatures on your email. Mm -hmm. That was fun, you know, making pictures and yeah. see if we could not do each other, you know? <laughs> well, somehow I got talking to this guy and he started telling me all about my brother. And I thought, you don't even know who I am. And he gave me great detail of my brother and his life in Pittsburgh. Um, what the heck? At my brother's funeral, who was there. He was telling me that he was even at my house. And I remembered that my brother had come home one or two weekends and brought other kids from the school with him. 
not very many, like five or six. Uh, mm -hmm. Three of them were from that area, and the others were like from other far away, but they come there just for the weekend for yeah. have fun, you know. And uh, I remembered this guy being there, but I don't remember what he looked like or anything. But I remember because I don't remember his, his my brother's friends, except the two I knew from the area. But everything he told me matched up. You know, he, he knew he knew at my brother's funeral because I told you he was popular. He was very personable. Yeah. Um, they were lined up in the street, up the sidewalk, you know, waiting to, for visitation and stuff. And he was describing the funeral home. He knew everything. And then he said, I won't be able to talk to you anymore. I have to go away that he was supposedly getting another job or something was moving away. And I, he wasn't even near me at that point. Didn't live near me at that point. And uh, he said, I won't be able to talk to you anymore. Um, so I'll just have to tell you goodbye. But I just wanted to let you know that, you know, I, I knew your brother and thought a lot of him. And now I'm thinking back, did I hear from Steven? Yeah, like maybe you were talking to your brother. Yes. Wow. I don't know. Maybe it was a real person, but I thought, you sure know an awful lot, you know? <laughs> right. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, we just don't know, do we? No. I mean, you know, if you think about, you know, we're all energy. Our brains fire electricity. And maybe we become electricity when we, you know, move on and can communicate that way. I mean, we just don't know. Wow. I'm thinking that now that it might have been him from recent stuff that I, I had emailed you about. And I'm thinking, hmm, <laughs> that's, that's happening on the too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe there's like some kind of bizarre rule that like they're not allowed to say, hey, this is so-and-so. You know what I mean? Like, you, we just don't know. Or like, maybe that would freak you out too bad. You know what I mean? At that time, I think it would have because I didn't really pay attention to. Wow, that's things, neat. You know, yeah. When was that? That was. That's really neat. About Twenty years ago, 20, 20, 25 years ago. Well, when MTV was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was like ninety, late nineties. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. He told huh. me his last name, but I don't I don't remember what his first name was. Well, I won't say it anyways, because <laughs> Right, right, right. So yeah, it'd be interesting to try to Google search that name. Yeah. Yeah. If you can, you know, if you have the full name. I remember telling my mom about it. And she just said, yes, that uh, Stephen had a friend by that name. But she mm -hmm. didn't elaborate on it. Interesting. I remember telling mom. Eyes are bothering me. <laughs> so that's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, we just really don't know, do we? I mean, people pick up EVPs, you know. And the internet's just electricity and another way to transmit sound and vision and you know so who knows hmm that's cool either way it's neat that somebody contacted you even you know let's assume it is a real person nice that they contacted you and and how he even knew who i was i don't know because i yeah. just you know with my name you you used to that's silly true name, too. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true too. So how would he know who you were? Huh, that is interesting. That's always kind of like stuck in my head, but I, I just didn't understand it. Huh. Wow. So that's now cool. quite a bit of time has gone by <laughs> and I ended up leaving Dubois and uh, I lived in Scottsdale, Pennsylvania for a while. And then uh, I ended up moving in with a, I worked at Sony and uh, 
that was a cool job. They had a private store for employees. Oh, neat. And uh, they got stuff cheap, you know, and it, it was it was cool because you couldn't get in unless you were a guest of an employee. Yeah. So it was it was neat. I never worked and I felt like it was the underground, you know. <laughs> but That's um cool. I ended up moving rented her basement the lady did the mail route in the in the plant and uh the house i was living in with some other uh friends in scottdale uh they were selling the house so we had to move so i asked sharon can i rent your basement so i moved to bell vernon in her basement and this is the house that was haunted okay this is the house i sent you those pictures of with the lights yeah yeah that was weird what did your friend say about those lights? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, if he, I, my, again, I don't remember anything. No, but I remember he thought it was very interesting because they were definitely strange. I mean, you know, definitely something odd going on there. It's the only time that's happened that I still have the camera here on my shelf here. I, I use it once in a while, but it's never done, never give me those lights again yeah it, and it looked they look very um not like normal sort of camera weirdness you know yeah double exposure yeah. type you know. yeah or like you know dust on the lens or glare from something they didn't they don't look like any of those things yeah i i never understood it and i yeah. didn't see them at the time i took the pictures I was yeah, out in the yard weird. in the middle of the night after a rainstorm and decided I was going to take some selfies. Yeah. <laughs> and I went back and said, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, but, there, uh, so when we post this video uh, on Facebook, you should put the pictures in the comment section so people can see what you're talking about. But they're definitely, I mean, definitely not like normal type pictures they were definitely interesting like something was going on there yeah my friend yeah, said the same weird. i'm like i don't remember specifically what he said but i know he thought they were weird too for sure there wasn't any sound or anything that night other than natural bug noises you know yeah <laughs> but there weren't lightning bugs out at that time because it, it it was a cold night and it had been raining mm -hmm. and i went out uh yeah. And what would be, I mean, they don't look like bug streaks, you know, like if a bug was picking up light or whatever, they didn't, they don't look like that. They're very like interesting. Ribbon. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly Almost exactly. like, you know, that, you know, that ribbon that they use to tie gifts. Yes. That thin satiny stuff. That's kind of like what it looked like, huh? Yes. Yeah. Like gift wrapping. <laughs> yeah, really interesting. So tell a little bit, tell a little bit about that place and like some, like, you know, just whatever kind of vibe or, um, you know, stuff that was going on. It was in Belle Vernon and her house was on a really steep hill in fact it almost went straight up it was so steep and her house was like on the hillside part way up from the bottom and it was hard to uh, like walk up and down because it was so steep yeah and like i said i rented her basement and you could either go out through the garage which you would have to go through where I was staying in her basement. There was a kitchen in there and a, a little bathroom. You could either exit by the garage or you would have to go up the steps into her kitchen and her kitchen door was the only other door out. And they, they were just a few feet apart. You, mm -hmm. you couldn't have both doors open at the same time. It was that yeah. close. But she had a little tiny dog. Um, it probably weighed maybe a pound high, you know, just a little. Yeah. Thing. And uh, Sharon would leave. She would go do whatever. And uh, 
I would hear boots on the floor mm-hmm. in her part That's go back creepy. and forth. Hi, is that Dirk? Yeah. <laughs> he always has <laughs> to peek shardy. in. <laughs> how shardy? <laughs> hey, Dirk. He wants to know how shardy is. <laughs> Not the dog. <laughs> Our dog is so weird. Dirk was standing there and the dog just starts barking at him. She's so weird. Anyway, he's he already ran to the other side of the house. Hit that little video come up in my recommendations one day. I watched it. Uh, Shardy pinches a loaf. Oh, God. <laughs> oh yeah. I laughed so hard at that. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty funny. <laughs> he's a clever kid. Yeah, he is. He is. He is. He's pretty funny. <laughs> Definitely has our sense of humor, too. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, so, I heard the boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would go back and forth. And I heard it a number of times. I couldn't tell you how many times I heard it. Well, yeah. I would run up and nobody was there. And I would know if somebody went out that door because the stairwell was open when it came down the basement. It wasn't like down like a hall down to the basement. It was open stairs. So I would have heard if somebody went out that door and right. no one was ever there. But I kind of felt that it was Indians. I don't know why, but I felt like it was an Indian or something around hmm. there. Hmm. But I was never scared. I just wanted to know what was doing it. Yeah, that would freak me out. But um, <laughs> Sharon was up. Uh, she was really big into psychics and uh, she would drive to where I ended up moving to a town to a lady who would read tea leaves for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sharon made a number of trips to her and she wanted me to go different times. And I'd say, no, um, I don't want to go. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying to think of some, oh, 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 okay, okay. I'm glad, see, I know, I, I knew I needed to make notes. It happens to me too, for sure. No. When I was on Strange Familiars, he had me write up a whole list of stuff so we wouldn't forget anything. <laughs> I think of Carol Burnett that time she knocked on, I think it was Tim Conway's head and asked, is anybody in there? You know? Yeah, relatable. Yeah. I'm having one of those. I'm having one of those weeks. It's been a rough week. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I if I feel if I seem weird right now, we've had a pollution advisory all week, and I've had like a weird dizzy headed headache, sinus allergy thing going on. Like I had to put my glasses on because my eyes are bothering me so bad. Um, <laughs> If I seem a little weird, that's why. So much drama going on out here. <laughs> what is going on? Dirk's got a lightsaber out and the dog's barking at him and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so, um, continue. <laughs> <laughs> So um, at that time is when I first started having some, you know, I'm diabetic. Yeah. And uh, I started having some foot issues. Yeah. And I was having some serious trouble. I ended up in the hospital and I thought they were going to take my foot at that time. And it was uh, so scary. It was scary. It was, I was petrified. And uh, he ended up taking... Like, this is your little toe. Mm -hmm. He took a bone here and left my toe floppy. (laughs) What? That's what he did. And it it took care of the ulcer. The ulcer went away. He explained it somehow like the bone was putting pressure on the ball of my foot. And that's why I had the ulcer that if he took that bone out, that ulcer should go away for a while. So I I agreed to it. So the day I went in... And uh, they give me a gown to put on, you know, to get ready for the surgery. Sure. I got 
kind of tangled in it and the nurse was helping me and uh i think it's called a saint christopher medal mm. was sewn into the gown that one that's like for protection yeah it was sewn into the gown and she she undid it it was and oh it was pinned in too with safety pins and she took it and she says you better hang on to this this is supposed to be for you that's so weird so i did i kept it i still have it here i have an angel in my living room and it's hanging off the hand you know? wow that's really cool so i i kept that i thought yeah I'm, i evidently i'm supposed Heck to have yeah. and uh, that's a bit of a good vibe before surgery but then when i went home i started seeing lights in the basement so that's when that started i would say yes yeah and it was a green light i remember um i had to recuperate for like six weeks or something and keep my foot up and whatnot you know yeah and I remember i was in 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 the basement in sharon's chair and uh it was like a light green light come over me but i couldn't see where it was coming from and i saw that a number of times in that basement this this so light do you think that's like a spirit? Do you think it's like an angel? What do you think? That's weird. I didn't know. And I saw like a free psychic reading through email. Yeah. <laughs> and I sent it to her and told the lady what it was. And she wrote back. She said that it was um, a guardian angel. Yeah. That most people never meet their guardian angel, but for some reason that guardian angel decided to let me know that things would be okay. Yeah, so maybe because of the situation or whatever. That's weird. And this happened right after the surgery? Yes. Yeah, right after. Huh. It. Huh. Several times. Several times. That's interesting. I started seeing shadows in her basement too. Okay. In not, not directly, but in mirrors. Uh, she had a couple mirrors down there. And I'd look in one mirror and I could see like a figure. But when I looked to where the figure would be, there was nothing there. So did she ever see anything um, when you weren't there, like prior to you moving in? No, and she never really did when I was there. Hmm. So she would just run to the psychic. Definitely. <laughs> so it was definitely centered around you, like your presence. Yeah, yeah, I would have to say yes. Hmm. Yes. So I'm thinking like, what if that's kind of like your brother sort of hanging around, um, you know, just kind of being present, keeping an eye out or something, you know? I mean, I don't know how stuff works. <laughs> None of us really know how anything works, but it, it, that's interesting, you know, like, you go in for surgery, you find this um, metal, St. Christopher metal, and then afterwards, this light anomaly is kind of following you around. That's kind of interesting. It was only in the basement, except those other lights were outside. But that was before I had the surgery, that, that, those pictures I yeah, had. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you said you got sort of a Native American vibe off that. Huh. The whole place, all the time. I always, I always felt like there was an Indian nearby. I don't know why, but I just felt that way. That's interesting. Nothing hmm. in particular, you know. Said Indian, there was no. Just vibes. Yeah, yeah. There was huh. no evidence, you know. No. Sure. I don't believe Sharon even owned anything that would have been Indian. She may have. She had a lot of stuff down there. Well, <laughs> and I mean, being like what Pennsylvania, you know. Yeah. There's a yeah. history there. Yeah. For sure. So yeah, who I mean, who knows really, 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 who knows? That's all, all this is ever is just kind of speculation, you know? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know you have some interesting synchronicities. Did you want to talk about those things with like hummingbirds and interesting sort of synchronicities that kind of come about? Yes. 
I have, well, actually, after I left Bel Vernon, there's some other stuff. Oh, sure. It might make sense if I go through that and then get to that. Sure. If that's all right. Is that it's okay? It's your show, man. It's your show. Let's oh, do it's it. your show. No. I just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved to a town called Pitcairn. It's just outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. Uh, and that's where I started. Uh, I just happened to read on, read it online about this group of people that, that um, back when uh, spiritualism was born. Yeah. In America, that, and it went, you know, worldwide. Uh, everybody was a psychic, you know, and uh, sure. this group was born to, they want to investigate it, you know, to find out is there truth to it? Is it fraud or whatnot? And it was, um, highly educated people uh marie curie was in it mm -hmm. did some things for it um if if i would ever get the chance which he's gone now he's been dead for years but i would have always loved to have met sir oliver lodge you know um some of these people you know worked in um queen victoria's court and so forth you know so these people weren't just run of the mill people they sure. and when they investigated they would take the case study it from top to bottom uh give you pros of why it could be true give you what they thought why it wouldn't be true you know and then it was kind of up to you to decide if you wanted to believe it or not sure. and um they wrote volumes and volumes of books and i bought i've got three bookcases full of books by them wow tons of stuff you wouldn't believe the stuff they wrote um but i started with it was a two volume set and it was uh phantasms of the living and it gave it could be a paragraph to maybe two or three pages of of an incident and then their philosophy on it mm -hmm. their thoughts of it sure and it was things like uh telepathy mm -hmm. cases of telepathy uh near death experiences uh death i'm i'm saying the wrong word for this but um when someone dies and someone else sees their spirit you know what i'm talking about mm. <laughs> say like you're you're in your house for for example and maybe uh someone you know Oh, passed away a few miles away and you didn't know it you oh okay yeah I, I don't know what the word for that is uh, I can't think what it is I know what it is but I can't think it's what not, it is not astral pro, astral projection the person's not dead um I, yeah I don't I don't know what the specific word is for that but you would you would see the person maybe they would appear and yeah you would yeah. say hello to them and then go on, you know things like that um they would do studies of someone in one house would set a time for say Sunday at 3 PM and mm -hmm. someone in another house would set aside the same time person in the first house would try and mentally transmit some sort of message or instruction to the person right, in right. the other house. They keep notes and then compare did yeah. the message be through or did it not, you know? That's telekinesis, right? Is that what that is? Telepathy. Telepathy. Telekinesis. Telekinesis, is I think, is when you yeah. can move things with your yeah. mind. Yeah. My brain's not working well today. <laughs> <laughs> so I read these tons and tons of books, but in this building that I moved in in Pit Karen, the only real sp spooky thing, there's a couple things happened there, was I could hear people coming up and down the steps that weren't there yeah. i'd be in the stairwell and i could hear them moving and the stairwell it was a split level building but you could look down and tell if someone was coming up or down yeah no one was there 
And that happened several times where I could hear somebody in this stairwell with me. Ew. So that's sort of similar to you heard the boot steps at the um, that other house too. Yeah. Hmm. Only oh, this time it sounded like a raincoat. Oh, like a swishing like a, sound. Yeah, yeah. It was, huh. it was like a swishing sound. Yeah, it wasn't steps because those were those were I believe they were cement steps. But yeah, I could hear like clothing rustling. And, yeah, interesting. Hmm. And this this scared me. I've been, I've been reading these books for months, and you kind of feel like you're in tune with stuff then because right. you understand things better and how they right. explain it, you know, and you kind of feel like you're in tune with stuff and. I remember I was sitting in my living room. I was on the third floor up and I was staring at a shelf and I kept thinking to myself, this, that shelf's going to fall. That shelf Ooh. is going to fall. And it did right there in front of my face. Boy, if I was, I was scared then that startled me. I, I did not expect that to happen. And the shelf had been hanging there for months. Huh. You know? <laughs> so do you think that, um, you sensed it was going to happen or you kind of made it happen? I think I sensed it. Hmm. I don't so think I did. It. So sort of similar to the vibe, you know, the feelings that you got before your brother passed away. Yeah. So you, 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 must, maybe you have just this really in tune, like, uh, empathetic, you know, way about you that you can sort of sense the, the even slightly mild changes in the atmosphere around you you know well i did something tonight you'll probably think it's a little freaky what? um you know that about my covid shot yeah 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 suddenly out of the blue i get this phone call we'll be there in 20 minutes to give you the shot you know yeah. i wrote the white house three times i called uh, the county to get one. Uh, I called two different hospitals. Nobody was giving it to home people. Yeah. And I, I just out of the blue, I get this call. We'll be there in 20 minutes. Well, I thought, I don't care what you give me. I, I, I've tried so hard to get the shot. Sure, I'll yeah. take whatever you're bringing. Sure. And the guy came and he left. And then this evening, I was talking to a friend of mine, Kyle. And uh, Kyle's a doctor and he lives in New York. And uh, I don't know why I said this to him. I said, Kyle, did you arrange for me to have that shot? And he says, who told you? <laughs> I don't know why I thought that, but. Oh, that's neat. I don't know how he did it. He wouldn't, wouldn't tell me any more about it. He just said, who told you? And then he kept changing the subject. So he didn't want to tell me how he did it, but somehow or other, he, and I was getting emails from someone right after that I got that shot. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't sign their name. And it come from, it looked like an official doctor's email, but there was no like uh, uh, signature to it or anything. It was just an email and it was saying that someone will be there in a few minutes to give you a shot. Well, by then I'd already had it. And I wrote back, but the person wouldn't, wouldn't, I said, who, how did you know I needed this shot? And the person wouldn't tell me anything. That's Just interesting. That we'll, we'll make sure you get it, the second shot here in a few weeks, you know? Okay. And then tonight it dawned on me. I thought, Kyle, you did this, didn't you? Yeah. He probably had connections to, you know, home nursing or, you know, whatever. Something That's really interesting. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool because you had told me that you were just trying to get it and trying to get it and trying to get it and then like that. Yeah. I am boy, I felt so lucky that day. <laughs> yeah. So um how are you feeling afterwards? Uh, that night my arm got real sore, like it's like mm -hmm. somebody punched me really hard and I had a couple hot flashes, but that was it. Yeah. Well that's good. I felt like a woman, you know. <laughs> so, yeah you know. <laughs> good times. it's good times oh <laughs> so, so um after that all uh 
the stuff happened with um, the footsteps or the um, swishing fabric or whatever on the stairs. So what what's what's beyond that? I I bought a Ouija board. Ooh. But I got rid of that thing in a hurry. Yeah. Because it seemed like as soon as I brought that into the apartment, my transmission went, you name it, bad luck and stuff. And I thought, it's got to be this board. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hey, can you hold on a second? Can you hold yes, that talk for a second? I'll be right back. Sorry. Sure. 